Okay. All right. I'm going to open up the hearing on House Bill 5189. Pardon me. 5189 is uh, from Representative McEntee regarding business and professions. Uh, this amends the definition of the practice of pharmacy to include authority to prescribe drugs and devices. The act also provides the conditions for which a pharmacist may prescribe an indicated drug or device. We have verbal testimony from two folks. This is Representative Casey. Who am I speaking with? My name is Dr. Kent, Pharmacy Association. Hi, Kenneth. If you could just uh, speak a little bit slowly and, and a little more clearly. Uh, you are uh, with the Rhode Island Pharmacists Association. Is that correct? Yes, I apologize. My name is Dr. Kent Clay. I'm a pharmacist at Anchor Medical and I'm representing the Rhode Island Pharmacists Association tonight. Okay. Um, Thank you. Go ahead and testify on House Bill 5189, please. Could you just to clarify, just because the House bills confuse me sometimes, this is the one about the test and treat, uh, correct? The pharmacist prescribe. This is regarding the practice of pharmacy to include the authority to prescribe drugs and devices by Representative McEntee. Also includes... Okay, just wanted to make sure I... I yep. apologize for cutting you off. I just wanted to make sure I was testifying about the, the right one. Okay. Um, so uh, I wanted to thank everyone for the opportunity to, to speak. I know that the original hearing didn't go according to plan, so I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak again. Um, the association is proud of the work that pharmacists have been doing for years, um, both in clinical care within the uh, ambulatory care and pharmacist environment and along with community. Um, and this pandemic with COVID has shown that access to care for patients um, that's timely and at the point of care is really important for patients. Um, and uh, we are proud of the work that our pharmacists have been doing. This bill would allow us to continue to do our work in making sure that our patients um, don't have delays in care and can get the care that they need when they need it. Um, a lot of the provisions that are in this bill have actually already been passed through emergency action through the governor's orders during this pandemic. So for the past uh, nine months, pharmacists have already been able to do um, refill extensions and uh, certain other limited prescribing and emergencies like substitution of medications to address back orders and shortages. Um, and it's gone really well, and we haven't gotten any major complaints from providers making sure that patients can get access to their care. This bill would allow those types of authorities to become permanent. Um, so if a patient can't get a hold of their provider or their provider's office is closed, um, so for in the case of, uh, you know, uh, the heat shortage or electric shortages um, that faced Newport a few years ago or if something like that were to ever happen again, uh, like what's going on in Texas, um, or in cases like COVID, uh, when pharmacists can't get a hold of providers quickly, they'd be allowed to extend refills, they'd be allowed to um, make minor changes to prescriptions, um, and then uh, allow them to write for prescriptions for devices like syringes and spacers and testing supplies that our patients need. Uh, and currently, um, the regulations require that we you know, delay that care and not give the patients what they need, instead having to either page a doctor in the middle of the night or wait until the doctor gets back to us at the next business day or later. Um, one of the things that we've been faced with in pharmacy for the past nine months uh, is the, the kind of turnaround time to communicate with providers has been extended. Um, and so the, the current law allows us to kind of do a, a three-day emergency supply, but a lot of our physician colleagues are, are unable to get back to the pharmacy within that three days and it's leaving patients in the lurch. Um, and so a lot of the provisions in this bill would allow for kind of emergency access to care and allowing pharmacists to use their doctorate level uh, education to help take care of their patients. Um, the other provision in this bill would allow for the Department of Health and Board of Pharmacy and Board of Medicine to, cert to start to look at certain uh, self-evident diseases and conditions um, that would allow a pharmacist to then be able to prescribe. So for example, if someone came into the pharmacy and had a positive uh, flu test, instead of waiting for a PCP visit or, or for an emergency room visit to get a prescription for an antiviral to treat that flu, um, we're already allowed to test on site. We already have the result. 
Um, and so having um, protocols in place that would allow pharmacists to then be able to kind of test and based on that test result, immediately treat for minor self-evident conditions that don't require diagnostic skills, um, those would be the types of things that we'd be looking for here. Um, another example um, type protocol that's being used in many other states uh, is allowing for pharmacists to be able to uh, write prescriptions for over-the-counter products, for example, like Tylenol and some other issues. Um, and while obviously anyone can go into the pharmacy and buy that now, currently if you have uh, you know, a Medicaid plan, for example, in order to get that covered um, by your insurance plan, you do have to have a prescription. Uh, and we've heard dozens and dozens of cases where patients, um, because they can't afford their Tylenol, for example, have gone to the emergency room um, with the in expressed intent to get a prescription for Tylenol uh, in order to come back to the pharmacy to be able to get that covered. Um, we would be um, looking to work with the Department of Health on, on developing a standard order type um, process that would allow for pharmacists to be able to um, uh, dispense medications pursuant to that standing order for certain conditions that are already things that our pharmacists and patients are self-treating, for example, over-the-counters, Tylenol, stuff of that nature. Um, and so this bill would allow for kind of uh, acute care type stuff that's really simple to be managed at the point of care in the pharmacy. Um, Rhode Island would be the sixth state in the country to have this. Um, the United States in general is one of the only countries in the, in the world that doesn't already have arms doing this level of care. Um, and this would um, allow us to be in line with kind of the rest of the world's medical system and the six other states who are already um, seeing this. Um, so if, if you guys have any questions or comments, I'd love to take them. Thank you, sir. Uh, are there any questions from the committee at this time for our witness? Okay, seeing none, uh, thank you, thank you, Kenny. Um, we're going to move on to our next witness. Um, we have Mr. Right. Leonard Lopes at some point. Hello, Leonard Lopes. Hello, Mr. Lopes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Representative Casey, Chairman of the House Health and Human Services Committee. How are you doing today? Great, great. How are you? Good. I have you here uh, with our committee on House Bill 5189 from Representative McEntee. This is regarding uh, the business and professions amending the definition of the practice of pharmacy to include authority to prescribe drugs and devices. If you would please uh, give your testimony, um, if you could keep it brief. I know, I know you've been watching with us, so go right ahead. Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, Leonard Lopes on behalf of the Rhode Island Veterinary Medical Association and uh, had a conversation with the representative on her bill. Uh, and again, we are certainly not uh, against the substantive goals of her legislation. However, uh, when we took a look at the bill, uh, it may unintentionally um, venture into uh, the types of uh, veterinary medicine practices that my clients engage in. I know that's not the intent of the bill. I think the previous uh, witness did a tremendously good job, very clear, uh, setting forth the things that the pharmacists have been doing during this pandemic. And certainly we don't want to stand in the way of what this honorable representative wants to do. Uh, I'm hopeful that she will um, allow a, a friendly amendment, if you will, um, that makes it clear that uh, pharmacists cannot, respectfully of course, cannot uh, practice veterinary medicine. I don't think they want to. I don't think that's their intent. So we just have to make it clear. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lopes. We appreciate the testimony. Um, Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Lopes at this time? If not, that will close the hearing on House Bill 5189. Thank you, Mr. Lopes. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll see you sometime soon, hopefully. Absolutely, looking forward to it. Okay.